Hello everyone, today I am going to be teaching you about rates. So rates are basically parameters that tell the quad how fast to rotate based on where your stick is on the transmitter. So consequently, rates have a huge impact on how the quad feels to you when you're flying, so it's something really important to tune. I would say that rates and PIDs are probably the two most important things to tune because they have such a big impact on how the quad feels. So obviously this video is about rates, but I did make a PID tuning tutorial. So if you want to learn how to tune PIDs, the link to that video is in the description below. Now, before we get started, I want to point out that I will be using Betaflight throughout this video. However, rates are the same across different flight controller softwares. It's just that the three parameters will be named differently in different flight controller softwares. So if you can figure out what the corresponding names are in your flight controller software, you can use this video to tune your rates in any flight controller software. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and learn about rates. Okay, so I'm in Betaflight, I'm gonna hit connect, and then I'm going to go to the PID tuning tab and then rate profile settings. So these are your rates. So there are three parameters that you can tune, RC rate, super rate, and RC expo, and you can tune them individually for each axis. Now, before I get into what these parameters do, let's take a look at some of the handy dandy tools that Betaflight gives you to help you understand what your rates are actually doing. So in the bottom left, we have this response curve where the horizontal axis is your stick position and the vertical axis is the rate of rotation of the quad. These values on the left are the rates of rotation that correspond to your current transmitter stick positions. So you can see when I move the sticks, these values change. And then the values on the right are your maximum rates of rotation or your maximum velocity, which is reiterated in this column here. So that's how fast the quad can rotate if you go full stick. So you can see that these rates of rotation are measured in degrees per second, which is just an angle per unit time. So it's just how fast the quad is gonna flip. So just to give you some perspective, 360 degrees per second means that if my maximum velocity is 360 degrees per second and I go full stick, it will take one second for the quad to complete a full flip because there's 360 degrees in a revolution. And as this value increases, the quad will be able to rotate faster and faster. The other tool we have is this model on the right, which gives you an idea of how the quad should ideally respond based on your rates. So this can give you a general idea of how your rates are gonna feel, and you can also use this to basically check to make sure you're not gonna crash because you've used some absurd values for your rates. So now let's go ahead and talk about what these parameters do. So what I've done is I have set all of the values equal to zero or as close to zero as Betaflight will let me so that we can take a look at these one at a time and see their individual effects on the response curve. So let's talk about RC rate first. So I like to think of RC rate as kind of the base rate or fundamental rate because first of all, without it, the super rate and RC expo don't do anything. So our so super rate and RC Expo are kind of just modifiers of it. And RC rate just scales the entire response curve up and down evenly, regardless of stick position. So what I mean by that is it's basically just a linear scale. So if we only have RC rate, our response curve is a straight line. So because this response is a straight line, what this means is that when I give half stick, the quad is going to rotate at half of the maximum velocity. So our maximum velocity right now is 200. It's gonna rotate at about 100. If I go quarter stick, it's gonna be a quarter of 200 or about 50. And when we increase this value, it just kind of scales the entire response up and down evenly. It maintains that linearity to it. Um, so if we go up to two, it's double of what we had before. So now our max velocity is 400 instead of 200. Now, something weird about Betaflight is when you go over to the scale changes uh, and it becomes a lot more sensitive. So just keep that in mind when you're tuning. If you go over to your values are going to start to go up really fast. 
Now, something I want to mention about this linear graph here is that to humans, a linear response is generally quite intuitive and natural feeling. So for example, if you push the gas pedal down in your car halfway, it would make sense and feel very natural to you that the engine gives you half of its power. However, a problem arises in quadcopters and you know doing freestyle or any fast motions because all of a sudden we have to be able to control the quad not only at really fast rates of rotation doing really fast flips and rolls but we need to be able to hover it and do nice smooth turns and things like that and because we need to be able to control the quad over this giant range of velocities uh, a linear response no longer works well so a linear response feels natural but when we're working with really high rates it just doesn't work well in practice so that's where super rate and rc expo come in so I'm gonna talk about RC Expo first, and uh, without RC rate, Super Rate and RC Expo can't do anything, so we're gonna leave RC rate constant at one for now. So as you can see, as RC Expo goes up, curvature is added to this response curve. So what that means is the slope towards center stick is reduced, which means the quad is gonna feel less sensitive at center stick now, but we've maintained our maximum velocity. So we're still gonna be able to get that maximum rate of rotation while having a softer feeling center stick. Now this also means that the slope is steeper towards full stick. So it's gonna feel a little less natural and a little more twitchy towards full stick, but we make this compromise to get better controllability for hovering, smooth turns, things like that. And the other thing I want to mention about RC Expo is it adds curvature to the graph kind of evenly. So a similar amount of curve, you know, down here as it adds up here. So now let's look at super rate. So if I dial in more super rate, you can see our maximum velocity is increasing. So both RC rate and super rate affect your maximum velocity and we're getting curvature again. But what you'll notice is that the slope at center stick so when we're hovering and whatnot, the response remains the same because that slope remains the same. So it's only really affecting this area near full stick. So you can see that both Super Rate and RC Expo add curvature to this response. And you may be thinking, well, why do we need two different values to add curvature to the response? Well, Super Rate adds more curvature later on towards this full stick area, whereas Expo kind of adds it evenly to the entire curve. So to demonstrate this, I have a different rate profile set up where the red curve is only using super rate and the green curve is only using Expo. And what I've done is I have matched as close as I can the maximum velocities and I have matched the slope at center stick the best I can. So what this means is between these two curves, the quad's going to feel the same at center stick and the same when you bang the stick to do a quick flip. However, for the red line, which is super rate, you can see that it kind of maintains this linearity a little bit longer than the green line, which is Expo. So the quad is gonna maintain that linear feeling up to a larger stick deflection. But once you get to kind of this area close to full stick, the rate of rotation just ramps up really fast and it's consequently gonna feel kind of unnatural in that area. Whereas Expo, it ramps up sooner, but it doesn't ramp up so aggressively towards the full stick. So it's gonna feel a little less natural at mid stick, but it's gonna feel more natural at close to full stick. So I hope that makes sense. The difference between Super Rate and RC Expo is probably the hardest thing to understand about rates and tuning rates. So now that I have explained what these three parameters do. Now let's talk about how to actually tune your rates. So I've punched in the default values for our roll axis here. And I think these are good values to start with. If you're intermediate or advanced, they're probably not fast enough for you, but we're gonna get into how you're gonna tune these. So the first thing that I think you should tune is your maximum velocity. So basically when you bang the stick, how fast do you want the quad to rotate? What you should do is just incrementally increase your RC rate until you're satisfied with how fast the quad rotates. 
at full stick. So just go out, do some flips, do some rolls. If you want it to flip faster, just increase the RC rate. However, while you're increasing this, you may find that the quad is now becoming too twitchy at center stick because remember the RC rate is scaling up the entire curve evenly. So if you're finding that's the case, just dial in some RC Expo for now to keep the quad controllable. Generally, uh, a good range for a maximum velocity is between 900 and 1200 degrees per second, but this is all personal preference. So if you're not within that range, don't worry. It's just whatever feels good to you on the sticks. And that's why I am not out doing a demonstration where I fly because I would just be tuning for my personal preference. And it's different from something like PID tuning where I can show you like different tendencies of the quad or bobbles or things like that. This is purely personal preference. So for this example, let's just say that you've settled on a value of a thousand just because that's easy to remember. Now you are satisfied with how your quad feels when you just bang the stick. It's just a good rate for you. It's natural feeling. Now let's sort out how the quad feels when you're at center stick. So doing things like hovering, smooth turns, that's how you're gonna test this. So now you're just gonna adjust the expo until that feels natural. So if the quad feels too twitchy at center stick, you should add more expo because it's gonna make that graph more curvy and decrease the slope at center stick so it's gonna feel more numb at center stick which is what you want if it feels too sensitive. If it feels too sluggish, you just decrease Expo and it has the opposite effect. Now you have tuned the feel at center stick and the feel at full stick. And from now on, you're trying to maintain the feel of center stick and full stick while tuning the middle part of the curve. So now what you wanna do is do maneuvers that have moderate rates of rotation. So, you know, maybe flips and rolls, but not quite full stick, maybe flowy, smooth, like half stick, three quarter stick, or, you know, split S'ing over a tree smoothly, pulling out, you know, smoothly, just not banging the sticks, but not just putting around. So that's gonna give you an idea of how your mid stick feels you may find that certain parts of that mid stick don't feel natural. And this is where we go back to linearity feeling natural. So whatever parts of the stick feel unnatural, you're gonna wanna try to make them more linear. So for example, if everything's fine and dandy up until maybe around three quarters stick and then it feels kind of twitchy, remember that super rate is linear for a longer period of time but then it just ramps up all of a sudden. So in that case, that steep ramp up is what's causing your issue. And what you wanna do is then decrease your super rate. But because super rate affects maximum velocity, you need to add back in RC rate to maintain the flipping speed that you decided you liked. But because you added RC rate, now you have to readjust your center stick because adding RC rate is going to make everything more sensitive. So you have to add Expo in until your center stick feels how it did before you decrease the super rate. So as you can see, at this point, it's like this giant balance of these three values going on. Uh, and this can be confusing, but just remember the difference between super rate and RC Expo. Super rate, linear, longer, and then it ramps up suddenly, RC Expo, nice smooth curve. That's what you do if it is too sensitive, you know, maybe around 75% stick, close to full stick. But if it feels too sensitive or just unnatural feeling at maybe a mid stick around this area, well, that means you have too much RC Expo. It's ramping up too much in this area, but not enough in this area. So in that case, you want to decrease the Expo to make the center part of the curve feel more linear but by decreasing the expo, now you have made this center part of the line steeper. So now the quad is more sensitive than you want it to be in this center section. So to decrease the slope in the center section, you have to decrease the RC rate. But because you decrease the RC rate, then you have to increase the super rate to maintain that maximum velocity that you decided on. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, you just wanna figure out your maximum velocity and center stick feel. And then it's a balance of the three values to basically 
adjust where the graph is more curvy and less natural feeling so that it feels right for you. Now, there are some things that I wanna mention. There is a compromise between the controllability you have at center stick and the controllability you have at kind of mid to full stick. The shallower this line is around center stick, the more the line has to just ramp up aggressively past half stick. Because of this, what I would recommend is make your center stick a little bit more sensitive than you think you want it to be. And that way, as you grow as a pilot, as you get adjusted to these rates, it's gonna be easier for you to control the quad when you're doing faster maneuvers, which are arguably harder. So basically, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of controllability for those slower movements to make it easier for you to control the quad when you're doing faster maneuvers, which I think is a good trade-off and it kind of pushes you as a pilot as well. So I would make that center stick a little bit more sensitive than you're comfortable with. The other thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of people will use the same values for all three axes. I think this is a great way to start your rates. However, you do not use the three axes the same when you're flying, so it would make sense if you had different values, but once again, it's all personal preference. If you like how everything feels when you're using the same values, that's fine. But people like Johnny FPV use different rates for all three axes um, because that's what feels natural. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be all the same. For example, I wanted my center stick to be a little bit more twitchy for yaw than my other axes just because my thumb doesn't like to move as much on my left hand for some reason. So I just took out the expo on the yaw compared to my other axes. So with that said, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so I hope that you guys learned something from this video. I really spent a lot of time filming and editing this video because I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything important and I wanted to try to make rates as understandable as I possibly could because I know that rates can seem intimidating and complicated, especially if you're more of a beginner. So let me know down in the comments what you thought of the video and what other things you wanna see on this channel in the future. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please make sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you are new, and thanks for watching.